Good morning, NBC. This is Pastor Charlie coming to you with the uh, Word of God today, April uh, 26th, Tuesday. Uh, I'm reading from uh, Malachi, uh, chapter 2, verses 10 through 16 from the NIV. Do we not all have one Father? Did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our ancestors by being unfaithful to one another? Judah has been unfaithful. A detestable thing has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Judah has desecrated the sanctuary the Lord loves by marrying women who worship a foreign god. As for the man who does this, whoever he may be, may the Lord remove him from the tents of Jacob, even though he brings an offering to the Lord Almighty. Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because you, he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her. Though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant has not the one God made you. You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to one he should protect, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. This is the word of the Lord. Now, um, I'm sure if you've sat through any ordinary Sunday, uh, the uh, statistics on divorce is pretty dismal. Um, I'm afraid to say it, but it's a fact that uh, uh, there is no significant difference between uh, divorce rates within the Christianity, within believers, and within unbelievers, which is an alarming, alarming uh, state of affairs, right? A um, couple of things. Um, faithfulness, uh, interrelational faithfulness, it begins with, uh, with marriage. Marriage, um, as Pastor Tim Keller and his Kathy, uh, his wife Kathy Keller has written in their in their book, Meaning of Marriage, uh, they say that uh, marriage is a gospel enactment. So, from from a social point of view, when you look at what a relationship or a marriage, uh, what the relationship between God, uh, Jesus, and His Church looks like, man and wife is supposed to enact that, you know, to live it out. And uh, what we're seeing here is that God has, through the prophet Malachi, pretty sharp criticisms about the foundational unfaithfulness. Men who are just taking liberties into divorce their women back in those days. Of course, things are vastly different, different now. We see uh, women, in fact, initiating divorce far more frequently, frequently than in the biblical times. But back in those days, Women who had much of a lesser standing socially, um, if a man would divorce them for whatever reasons, they would be extremely disenfranchised. Their mode of production, uh, I mean, the survivability was really, really low. So uh, widows, widows had a very low uh, survivability. Um, many times, uh, Women who were divorced were relegated to, to surviving through um, prostitution. So it is a social ill, uh, even now as it was before. And uh, being that the relationships is a central thing to God, the creator, and us, the creatures, and also from among ourselves with each other and within the nucleic family uh, in a monogamous relationship between a husband and wife. These are foundational things that uh, weave this fa the fabric of society. And uh, 
in the in the time that we're living now today, it has it has been under jeopardy for a long time, and uh, it's it's coming further and further at disarray. So uh, this is a calling for men, for men to be faithful husbands to their wives, to have uh, us men having our eyes only for our wives, right? To not be tempted in any way and to, to provide that security uh, in the relationship so that uh, the wife can also be loving to the husband, right? And then uh, we have another thing, uh, verse 13. Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. And then you ask why? Uh, well, because of the unfaithfulness. If we are unfaithful to our spouses, if we are unfaithful to, to our families, if, if we deny the allegiance that are supposed to be there in the first place, then how do we expect to, to still get favor from God? <laughs> and I think this is a pretty clear uh, indication of the abuse of the religious system. Uh, we do become religious, and then uh, we think that somehow by bringing offerings to God, we can manipulate God's favor. Well, that is the first misunderstanding that would lead to God not being God anymore, but like a genie in a bottle. It's an idolatry. So um, look through Malachi. There's a lot of riches, uh, very, very insightful things about what it is that Yahweh, the Lord, expects from his people. Um, and so you may glean some, some keys, some secrets, mind you on uh, what would lead you to enter into the blessed life, uh, maybe perhaps even the abundant life. So with that, I, I bid you guys uh, a wonderful week in the Lord um, and uh, that you will be blessed by taking heed to the warnings. Come to these words and allow the, the living God to speak into your heart and experience the, every reading of the Bible with fear and trembling and expectancy that whatever you're reading and you're committing to your heart, it will see fruit in your lives. So blessings to you. Uh, may your day, may this week just be a triumphant one in the Lord. Hallelujah.